Um, so this one will be a bit more brief than the previous uh, presentation. We'll just be talking a little bit about uh, the current status of the cholera free uh, status framework. So by means of background, um, cholera free status, you know, essentially meaning that cholera has been elim eliminated as a threat to public health um, is really a critical definition in terms of us thinking about achievement of one of the targets of the global roadmap to eliminate the disease in at least 20, as many as 20 countries um, by 2030. And in operational terms, what we mean by this is that um, there's an absence of community transmission of cholera that's been documented for at least three consecutive years, and that is based on a well-functioning epidemiologic and laboratory surveillance system that can detect and confirm cases. So in terms of the purpose of the framework, um, this framework is intended to be transparent and also harmonized with other GTFCC guidance. And in terms of the perspective for GTFCC target countries and regions, it serves as a way to document in a standardized manner the achievement and maintenance of elimination of cholera disease as a threat to public health. And for the GTFCC, this framework enables um, the independent assessment formal recognition and monitoring of progress towards cholera elimination. So in terms of an update on the state of play, um, as you may recall from the surveillance working group meeting last year, the interim GTFCC cholera free status framework was presented. So the question is, where is it now? So that interim framework was presented to the GTFCC steering committee, and they provided some feedback regarding a few steps that they would like um, for us to take prior to publication of this framework. Um, notably, they'd like for it to be piloted in country and then refined using those lessons learned from that experience, um, and then finally proceed to publication. So in terms of the objectives for this session, one is simply to sensitize potential pilot countries um, to the, the state of play and that there exists the opportunity for them um, to really be a pioneer in terms of piloting this framework. Um, at the current stage, this is interim um, guidance or an interim framework. And so there's flexibility and really you know, the opportunity to be able to provide um, an influence on, on what the format of the framework is going forward. Um, in case of a negative outcome, meaning that the application for recognition of color free status is not approved, the identity of the pilot country will remain confidential. And some recommendations for improving surveillance and preparedness will be provided by the independent review panel that, re that will uh, review the, the applications. Um, I'll continue with just a brief recap of some of the key requirements um, for piloting so that um, potential pilot countries can identify themselves and um, better determine if they think that uh, they're interested in, in participating with us in this pilot experience. So key requirements and procedures. Um, so there's two aspects to um, cholera free, the cholera free status framework. The first one is recognition of the status, which means that there's an absence of community transmission and also appropriate and well-performing epidemiologic and laboratory surveillance, meaning that the country has met the um, recommendations that are described in the current interim um, recommendations. And then ultimately, once the comprehensive recommendations are published, the comprehensive recommendations. So the second aspect, once recognition is achieved, the country moves to maintenance, which means that um, there's a continued absence of sustained or widespread community transmission. I'll note here that there is tolerance for limited community transmission, which again is, means that there's a transmission of less than two months and not spreading beyond one surveillance unit. And again, that there's appropriate and well-performing surveillance um, that's maintained during the maintenance period. So just to diagram a bit uh, the process.
Uh oh. <laughs> oh. Um, let me see if I can work it. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think I think we'll we'll touch on this content in, in other slides. So we'll just go forward. Sorry about this. Okay. It seems to be going automatically. Okay, okay. Well, there we go. Um, so just wanted to recognize with this slide that there is a constant um, possibility of you know, having a not smooth road towards recognition and maintenance, given that there is a risk of reintroduction of cholera um, if it's circulating either regionally or globally. And so just noting that if recognition is um, achieved and then a country moves to sustained community transmission, um, with that defined as, uh, as transmission lasting less than, less than or equal to six months and not spreading beyond two surveillance units, um, their status will be suspended. However, if they're able to achieve a minimum of at least 12 months without community transmission, in that case, their status can be reestablished and they'll move back to um, maintaining their status. However, if it happens that they move um, to sustain community transmission and then to widespread community transmission, so meaning that transmission in the community lasts more than six months, or it spreads to more than three surveillance units, then unfortunately the, their caller free status will be revoked and they'll have to go back to the process of applying for recognition. So just to be clear about, about that process, um, you know, should that occur. So in terms of sort of the administrative procedures of actually obtaining recognition and, and maintenance of status, um, so countries will need to prepare a dossier that's submitted to the GTFCC secretariat, and that's a standard um, forms or uh, application dossier that's needed for, again, for the recognition, maintenance, and then reestablishment um, if there is a suspension of status. So those dossiers are then uh, evaluate, reviewed and evaluated by a GTFCC caller free status independent review panel. And the panel will make a decision, be it positive or, or negative. If it's negative, it'll remain confidential. And then if it's positive, it'll be shared publicly on the GTFCC website. Um, and then recommendations are will be shared by the panel to be addressed in the future. And that's you know, also in case of either a negative or a positive um, outcome, if there are things that the panel would like to see in the maintenance um, dossiers that are submitted annually by countries. So in terms of the key messages on this, um, just to be very clear, the caller, that cholera-free status does not mean the absence of any cholera cases. Um, they can, there can be imported or, or clusters of cases. Um, provided that transmission in the community is, pre is prevented. A recognized status is subject to maintenance annually, and countries must document compliance with applicable requirements. Um, so essentially that their surveillance system is, is functioning at the level that's described in the GTFCC surveillance recommendations. And then finally, the GTFCC independent review panel um, is uh, provides an independent assessment that's based on transparent criteria that are described in the application materials. Um, and just to note also that the review panel um, comprises both uh, epidemiology and lab um, experts. So in terms of, I uh, guess, some specific messaging to potential pilot countries, um, in order to be eligible, the country must be a GTFCC pilot country 
and the application must be for the entire territory. So there's no possibility of a sub uh, national um, territory achieving status. Um, I think it's worth noting just to have an idea of the number of countries that might be eligible for this. There were 12 that did not officially report cho cholera community transmission for um, three or more years. And this is based on data as of 2021, which is the most recent available. And those that may be potential pilot countries um, may be able to do this provided that they do have a well-functioning um, surveillance system and also strong political will, just noting that that's an important component in order to engage in the process, both for recognition and then um, continued maintenance. So in terms of action items for countries that are potentially, um, potentially meet these criteria, um, please feel free to go to the link here um, on the slide. You can learn more about the free status framework and the requirements in the process. This is a link to a talk um, given by uh, Raul Kamaju at the surveillance working group meeting last year. And uh, please also feel free to liaise with the GTFCC secretariat, you know, informally here in person, or um, they can be reached at their, their email address here. Um, again, the process will be confidential, and so uh, there will not be a public announcement of, of the countries that will be piloting the framework, and confidentially, confidentiality will be maintained up until um, the point of recognition of status. So thank you very much for your attention, and I'm very happy to take any questions or comments. Yes, let's see in the middle. Thank you very much for this uh, presentation about cholera free status. This is remind me about polio free status, where all countries in the globe have to submit every year to WHO to maintain their polio free status. So it is a way also for the cholera, you want to be universal later and to have it on an annual basis that all countries have to submit to be declared as cholera free status. Thank you. Yeah, so this would be for the countries um, that are GTFCC target countries and who meet the criteria for eligibility. But yes, that's correct. It would be an annual maintenance. I see a question on the side here. Hi, thanks for the presentation. And apologies in advance if I miss this, but I was just curious. The cholera free status, will that incorporate the interventions across all the other pillars, or is it focused purely on the surveillance piece at the moment? So there is a section in the application that refers to other pillars, um, including surveillance. So I think in that in that way, it is incorporated. Thank you. Thanks. We are slightly behind schedule, so we may have to consider breaking soon. Um, maybe we can take one other question. Et ça peut être en français aussi, si vous préférez. Okay, well, maybe we'll take one online and then we'll break. Online, there is Fred Cavaya who would like to make a comment. So thank you very much again for this very good guidance that you have provided. Uh, the first one is just a comment, probably just to understand the cholera free status. Um, I presume this means elimination, probably just a clarification on that one. But also the other comment that I have is we noted uh, that quite a number of countries went for um, more than three years without um, cholera with community transmission. But just after three years, we had a boom in a lot of countries, especially in our region in Southern Africa. And it simply means that on the cholera free status, then we are taken back. Uh, because a lot of countries actually ended up actually recording cases 
And of course, what uh, has been guided will be discussed in the afternoon. There's been a lot of uh, uh, cross-border interaction uh, and, and, and seeing community transmission in most of these countries that have gone for more than three years without cases. So does it mean you go back to zero from where you started, despite the fact that at one point you had attained? Uh, that's my question. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks very much, Fred, for those que those questions. Um, in terms of elimination, indeed, the cholera free status is sort of our our definition of cholera elimination as a public health threat. And then to the second question around whether or not um, countries need to go back to not being able to apply for this status if they've had community transmission recently. Unfortunately, that is the case. Um, but in the meantime, we'll be working on improving the framework and hopefully those countries will be able to apply in the future. Mm -hmm. Maybe to complement also and to flag that all pieces that we are presenting at this meeting should be considered together. And yesterday, Elizabeth presented the framework for uh, PAMI for cholera elimination. And the purpose of that is to identify with a higher risk for the reestablishment of cholera to develop a plan to mitigate the risk in order to, to prevent the cycle you just described. By Fred. So the free status framework, the PAMI for elimination, the NCP for elimination, all of these should be considered together. Yeah, thank you, Morgan, for that question. I see there's a couple more questions. Um, I'm wondering if perhaps we could take those as part of the next session, since we'll have the hearing from countries, 